Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me today. I have a great card for you today. It's a Christmas card and it's a fun fold. Um, have you heard of the Bay Window card? And uh, so I have put together one that I think you'll kind of get a bang out of. And uh, so let's just get started. Here is my card. And the fun thing about this is it's just a regular standard sized A2 card, but cut at uh, four and a quarter by 11 inches long. And then your, your scoring on this uh, is what turns it into, and how you put the card together, turns it into what they call a bay window card. And what happens is because of the scoring, these pieces fold, and this little end piece here tucks underneath this piece on the bottom, and the card sits up and has that bay window kind of look. And it stands and can be displayed and it's quite, quite clever and very, very easy to do. Now it has lots of pieces. So um, let me show you what it takes to make this card. So the very first thing you need is cardstock that uh, I used white on mine, basic white, four and a half by 11. And I'm going to, we're going to score this one together so that you can see exactly how it is to be done. And I'll bring my, my trimmer in here and we'll do the scoring together. All right, so the very first thing we're going to, to do on this piece is we're going to score this. It might be better to do it here at the top and make sure that that's in the camera view. Okay, so what we're going to do is score this first piece at three-eighths of an inch. And each one of these, uh, there's three depths. And the longest one, well, there's four. The longest one is the one inch. The next longest one is the half inch. The next longest one is an eighth of an inch. And then the smallest one is a sixteenth of an inch. And we are going to cut this at three eighths of an inch. So there's one, two, three, and it's the longest one just before you get to the half inch mark. And you'll tell here it just bisects this one quarter inch panel. Okay, so we're going to close that up and we're going to score that at three eighths of an inch. Then we're going to scoot, scoot it down and score it again at one and seven eighths. So just before the two inch mark here, one and seven eighths. We're going to score that again. Then we're going to take it down to the three and five eighths inch, which is one eighth over the half. So three and seven eighths. Then we're going to score this at five and one eighth. Get that in there just right. Five and one eighth. And then our center of our paper is five and a half. And that allows the card to, to close and, and be um, the regular standard size card. And I don't know if you can see those, but we'll burnish them here in a second and you'll be able to see them just fine. Okay, so we'll burnish the, the card in half so that we have our normal card size. And then this line we are going to burnish this way. Let me get this pulled apart here. And we're going to burnish this one backwards. So ordinarily we burnish with the um, concave side out, but we need to get this done. These are uh, then burnished 
back the other way, these next two, and this one burnished the correct way. And you just need to keep making sure that your edges are right on um, point there and they are even on both ends of the card. And then this last one, we're going to fold backwards again. So back this way and we'll get that one burnished. And there we've got the basis of our bay window card. And then we're going to add some decorations to this. Let's start with what else you need to make this card. I have, um, let's, let's see, I'm going to go systematically here. So, and I have notes because there's a lot of pieces on this because we're going to cover the all of these places inside and out. And so I'm using Evening Evergreen. And then the DSP that I am using is this beautiful Tidings of Christmas designer series paper. And I'm using this paper and with Evening Evergreen background on that. And I'm using Evening Evergreen and actually Old Olive on the uh, pine boughs. And um, I'm using um, soft suede and early espresso on my pine cones. Uh, so that's what we're doing. So the very first thing we need to do, if I think about just the designer series paper, we need to have, let me just pull all of my pieces out here. We need to have four pieces of designer series paper cut. This is the first piece of designer series paper, and this one needs to be cut one and three eighths of an inch by three and seven eighths of an inch. And then we need two pieces that are cut one and one eighth by three and seven eighths, two of those. Then we need a piece that is a half inch by three and seven eighths of an inch. And that's how many pieces of designer series paper. Then the matting for those pieces needs to be cut. And that's done in the evening evergreen. And let's see, this first piece is one and a half by four. And that is going to mat the largest piece of designer series paper on the front of our card. Then we need two pieces that are cut one and a quarter inches by four. Okay, so now we've got two pieces of evening evergreen cut one and a quarter by four, and it's to back these two pieces of designer series paper. Then we need our piece that is a half an inch by three quarters. So we need another piece that is uh, 5 eighths of an inch by 4 and it's to back this little piece that's going to be our mechanism that holds our card in place. So that is the designer series paper and uh, the pieces for this part of the card. Then we need two pieces of evening evergreen that are cut one quarter inch by four, and that is going to frame the front of our card here. There we go. So that takes care of the front of the card. Now, for the inside of the card, we've already got this piece. Then we need a piece of evening evergreen. Yep, this piece. This is four inches by four and seven eighths of an inch. And that is going to mat the front. The reason it's not so long is because we actually put this piece down and glue it down. So in order for my piece then to fit with the margin, it's this size. So again, that piece is four and seven eighths by four. Then we need our white piece. So our piece of white is four and five eighths 
five, three and three quarters. Then we need um, some scrap. You'll need a pretty good sized piece of old olive and a pretty good sized piece of evening evergreen. That I did roughly a quarter of a sheet, so four and a quarter by five and a half, because the dies we're using for this are the Christmas pine cone dies, and these dies are actually quite large. So I've used, let me show you which ones, I think I used them all. So this is um, a detailed bow that comes out, and when it is die cut, it looks like this. And so you get all of this is cut out in one piece. Now that's not how we're going to use it, but it takes a pretty good sized piece of paper to cut all of that out. And I'd encourage you to do this because I think with this die cut, you can get two, maybe three cards out of one die cut. Then we need the big piece of evening evergreen, which I cut out of this, the lighter on top of the darker seems to make a, a big difference. And this piece I cut out of another quarter sheet that is four and a quarter by five and a half, again, just a very large die. And these two pieces end up layering together. Let's see if I can get this the right way. I think it's this way. These two pieces end up layering together and giving you that beautiful two-tone look for the, for the pine. And then we need a couple of pieces of scrap of soft suede and early espresso. And that is to cut out our pine cones. And this, again, cuts out a base and then a piece that layers over the top and they look like this. So there's a base and there is a top of the pine cone. And it makes it so that when it sits on the, um, the actual pine cones themselves, if you just did, I suppose if you just did this, but you put it on here, it kind of disappears. So I think you need something darker contrast behind it to make it stand out. The other thought would be to make your pine cone out of just the darker color and skip the layering. But I kind of like the two-tone look of that thing, so I did that. Then you need tiny little pieces of scrap of evening evergreen, and I use that to cut out the Stitch So Sweetly die for the sentiment on the front of my card that says Mary. And then on the inside of the card it says, may this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. Now, I've seen people do these cards and they also cover these panels on the back. I chose not to. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think the card holds up pretty well by itself. So if you chose to cover the inside, what you'd wanna do is cut two sets of these so that you could repeat that pattern on the inside. And I'm sure it would look lovely. And then you may want to go ahead for consistency and do another quarter piece of the evening evergreen on this end. And so that would be if you wanted to have the inside covered. It's already so many pieces that I decided not to. <laughs> All right, so that's what it takes to make this card. So uh, as is my practice, I have already done my die cutting. So I have my pine cones here and their backings and I have cut all of my um, pieces of pine cone. I mean um, the branches here. The pine boughs is what I'm trying to get, get said here. And one of the things that I thought was very interesting is that like this piece on my card, where's my card? Here it is. Okay. I made this a swag. So this is what the thing looks like when it's all together. Let me get this set on here. So you can kind of see that. And you can see three distinct pieces that could be used on the front of your card. And that is 
this top piece that has a couple of pine cones in it and some pine boughs. This piece in the center that has pine cones here and boughs over here. And this piece that has pine cones um, along, let me get that switched over, uh, along here and pine uh, boughs that are, are down here. And I think that makes three different little swags. So I think you can make one set of die cuts and make two, maybe three cards if you want to fill in some extra little bits of pine. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use um, one of the this piece here that was left, and I think that is one end. Yes, it's this end here. And I think for this one, I ended up using this end and cutting some pieces off, although this one has the three. So maybe I used this one and eliminated one. Anyway, this is what I have left. It's got three pine cones on it, and this has three pine cones on it. And so I'm going to layer these two together and put my pine cones on this one and use this for our card. So I'm going to move things out of the way and start putting our card together. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to glue this piece down. So I'm going to use some liquid glue because I want this to be absolutely glued down so that I'll never worry that that comes up. And for me, that's Tombow. So I'm going to get that glue spread around in there. And I'm going to push this down and I'm just going to hold that in place for a couple of seconds to let Tombow start to get its grip there on this little edge. And if you if you keep your glue away from the edges, you won't have any seep out. Um, and I, it's, a, it's a matter of practice to get to the point that you know just how far to put it to the end so that it doesn't end up making a big gluey mess for you. There we go. I think that will do it. And that'll continue to dry. And now that piece is ready to go. So um, I used my silicone mat a lot with this design. Let me get this little die out of here so I don't lose it. All right. So on these smaller strips, I did use my dot runner just because uh, I get full coverage this way and I can just kind of wipe away the stuff on the sides and not have it make a big gluey mess. All right, so on here, I'm going to set this down so that it has a similar margin at the top and the bottom centered on here. And this is actually fairly crucial because this is going to set the margin that I have all the way across this card because all of my pieces are four inches uh, long. So there's that one. Now I'm going to add one to this side. And put that into place, kind of eyeballing across from here to make sure I've kind of got that on the same wavelength there. All right, so now I have three pieces here that are going to go on the front. So these three pieces here. And so I'm going to put down my evening evergreen first. And I think I'll use my seal for that. It's a wider piece of card and can handle the seal. Okay, so trying to look across to where I've got my margin set on that first piece. Put that one down and I'm going to continue going across the page.
there I've got my evening evergreen set across the card now I'm going to add my designer series paper there we go so we're all set there now I'm going to put the inside together so that I can add my mechanism before I do anything else. So these two pieces can get glued together and um, then they can just go on the inside of the card. We go all right now these two pieces can be put together as you can see it's a lot of pieces and it looks complicated but it's really not um, once you get your die cutting done this is actually not a hard card to put together it's just and none of it's difficult it's just that it is um, um, lots of pieces okay now the trick on this piece is to make sure that the dimensionals that you put on the back of this to raise and catch this are far enough over that this card can go underneath. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that you put them more along one side. And I used minis because they're smaller and they wouldn't get so much in the way of the um, mechanism here so and so because they're smaller I actually used quite a few I put the straight edges along this side here and put them across my card This piece can go down here. This paper is pretty much non-directional, which is quite helpful. Um, and I want that to be able to tuck under here so that we get a nice big bay window. So I'm going to set this down and leave a tiny bit of a margin on this side. Okay, there it is. Now, all we have to do is slide this in, and there is our card all ready to go. So now, what we're left with is putting the decorations and the embellishments on. So, uh, I have used the stamp set that goes with this um, die set, and it is called Christmas to Remember. And this is the Mary that I used for the front piece. And then this is, may this be a Christmas to remember and cherish on here. This one would be lovely. Two friends like you make this season special. I mean, there's a bunch of things that you can do with this. But I tried to use just this bundle to make this one. And I stamped the inside. And maybe I should have stamped my greeting before I put it in. Um, but I scramp, stamped, did the stamping in Cherry Cobbler. And let me get this ink up here. And then I put it at a slight angle in this corner. And we'll have enough pine boughs that we could add a pine cone or some pine boughs to the inside if you chose to. Uh, and the first one I sure didn't because uh, I didn't see that it was... Uh, something that was absolutely necessary. <clears throat> so then we have for our little piece of white scrap, I have the word Mary, and I'm just going to tap that in here and stamp that right about here on the corner so that I can get my die around it. And there we go. So there's my inside stamping, 
and I'm doing that now because I really want that to dry before I get too much further on the card. And if you're worried about that at all, because there's nothing worse than opening it up and seeing the trace of ink on the other side. That's awful. I usually take a piece of uh, just scratch paper and close that while I do my decorating. So uh, that is where I used the, um, the Stitch So Sweetly small die and I've already cut mine out. So there's a My Mary and I cut the smaller one out again in the evening evergreen and we're going to do that trick where you cut this first one in half right down the middle and on this one you need to cut off those points um, in order for this to look right. So cut off those points then add plenty of glue to the back of your label and add these pieces to the top and the bottom of your Mary to give it an evening evergreen mat. There we go. There's our sentiment ready for the front and we've already stamped our one for the inside. So that is the extent of the stamping on this. And now we can go ahead and put on the pine boughs. So again, I'm going to come back to my silicone mat. I don't know what I'd do without this thing. <laughs> and I'm going to add just a little bit of glue, uh, just a bit going in the direction of the cuts. So in this, you wouldn't want to come this way on these. You'll pull the uh, bows. So you just go in the direction that the die cut goes, and you're usually in pretty good shape. And I'm going to get these pine cones and this bow up here. And then I'm going to just run my fingers along this so I take out any of the uh, glue that's kind of stuck in the webbing. And if you can see some, you can just use your pick tool or anything else to kind of make it go away. And you can also erase it with your gum eraser to get rid of any extra residue. Okay, making sure we've got this going the right direction. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect, which is kind of fun because it, the part of the fun of this is seeing the color behind it. So you could even offset this one uh, and be perfectly fine. Uh, and so I just kind of made mine sort of match up and put it down. And I can see this little guy here needs a little extra glue. And there we go. We've got our piece done. Now I'm going to go in and take off any excess glue. And again, you want to also erase in the direction of the, in this case, the bows, because um, you, you don't want to stress this. It's delicate and it could tear. There we go. That looks pretty good to me and I don't see any glue. And that's going to go right on here and I like the fact that it kind of sticks out over both of the other edges. So what I know is down this central piece is where I can put some adhesive. And I used glue dots because uh, uh, it gives it a tiny bit of dimension, particularly if you take your glue dots and you fold them over on themselves, then they're not quite so flat. So we know that kind of right down the center, and it'll raise it a little bit, but not as much as a dimensional. So again, I'm going to just take these glue dots and dot them on the back here of my pine cone. And once I get a few of them on, I'll start to put this on, and then I can see where else it would be good to put some additional glue dots. 
but this bit of pine isn't going anywhere once these glue dots are on here. And so that will raise those up a little. And I'm going to set that right in. So I will want another glue dot. Again, fold it over on itself underneath this piece. And I'm just going to pick this up to see where the best place is to put one. And I kind of like that piece. And then I might just take a little bit of other glue and just put that end down a little bit. And I think, I think that's good enough. I think that's down there pretty well. All right, now we're going to put the pine cones in place. And it's the same process. We're going to add a little bit of glue to this outside pine cone and set it on the darker piece. And get it approximately over the top. Now on that one, boy, I don't see much glue at all. So that's pretty good. And that one I did raise on dimensionals. So on that one, I think I just put a big one down here. And I put a little one up towards the top. And I laid that pine cone right over its facsimile here, but offset a little bit so I could see some of that green behind it. I thought that looked good. Now, I've got a smaller pine cone. That in place. And on these, I put these down on the card. Um with no dimension because there's so much going on on this card that I don't think it needs much. Now on this last one what we might do is layer a couple of glue dots to get it sort of in between how raised that one is and the other. So I'm going to put down, um, let's see this is the back of this. And what I'm going to do is put several of these glue dots on top of one another here. Folding them over so that they're stacked a little bit. Now this one is going to end up going right in here. And again, offset a little so I can see that green. And you can see that it's not completely flat. So that I like a lot. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of glue to this pine cone top and put that into place. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? I'm just in love with this card. I think it's great. And my Mary is going to go right across here. And that I might raise up on a couple of dimensionals. So I'm going to slide my Mary right in here down towards the bottom and then I have this beautiful cherry cobbler and gold um, metallic ribbon and I just made a knot bow. I um, took a small piece of ribbon and tied my knot And there we have, there's always a good side to the knot and a not so good side. So I'm going to take my ribbon scissors and just trim this off pretty short. And put another glue dot on the back of my knot. And let's see where we would like to place this. I kind of like it up here on this one. Well, maybe we can have it go this way on this one. There we go. Perfect. 
Now we're going to take a couple more glue dots and make sure that that bow isn't going to go any place. And I wonder if maybe this side should be a tiny bit shorter. There we go. Now I'm going to stick a glue dot right under here, not going past the, the um, score line. And just to kind of hold that down. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And just to capture, capture that bow like that. And there we go. That is the front decorated. I'm sure that this ink is now dry and won't transfer. So there we go. That is the basis of our card. Isn't that fun? And I just, I love this fold. It's so pretty. So the next thing we have is uh, I decided that the only thing we have that's got the cherry cobbler in it, and it works beautifully, are these garden gems that came out of the um, Eden's Garden. And they've got the cherry cobbler and the green on them. So I think they work particularly well for this. And I just dotted big ones and little ones kind of around on the card. I think I put, I don't know what, I must have put a big one on the other one. I'm just going to put a little one up here. And um, put a couple in here. And then on the inside, I did dot my eyes with a, a little gem. So there's one on Christmas, and there's one on Cherish. And then I did put one here on this edge so we could see that. And that is it. That is my project for the day. You can see, while it looks complicated and there's lots of pieces, it really is pretty simple. It's just layering and getting your designer series paper down in the right places. But isn't that just fun? I, I love this card. I think I'll end up making several of these. I just, I just fell in love with the whole idea. I love the idea that we can make one die cut and maybe get two, maybe three cards out of one die cut. Um, not very often that you can do that. And if you could have the patience to do two or three die cuts, you could easily make, oh, three, six, nine cards. And that's usually what I do, nine or ten of any one variety, so I don't get bored with them while I'm making them up for my Christmas. But there we go. Isn't that fun? So that is my project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. I so, I'm so lucky to have such wonderful subscribers <laughs> to my YouTube channel. Uh, your outpouring of love and support for me has been just unbelievable. And um, I really do appreciate it. And this is a time for family and gatherings and celebration. And uh, hopefully you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. This is going to go up. Well, no, it'll go up before Thanksgiving. So I'm going to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And uh, I let's see what's going on. In November, there is a join offer. So if you wanted to join my team, uh, become a demonstrator, either hobby or want to do more with it, I can help with both. Um, let's see, it's $125 worth of product, your choice of what it is, and it's only $75 instead of $99 through the end of this month. Well, see, it's still November. My prize draw for the month is a $60 shopping spree on me, and all it takes to put yourself in the drawing is to make an order of any size on my store, albedinger.stampinup.net. You can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com. And hopefully you've had a chance to get on my blog and check out our blog hop for November, which was more Christmas cards. So um, uh, that's it for me, and I'll be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye! Thank you.